What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the film room. I want to tackle a certain myth today about Cowboys running back Ezekiel Elliott that's been repeated over and over for the last year among football fans and media members alike, to the point where it's almost just become ingrained in everyone when talking about him. And that's that all of his success is really more due to his offensive line than his own ability. Some people out there believe that anyone could run behind that line, that Alfred Morris and Darren McFadden could have matched his production, and that he gets way too much credit for his achievements when really all the praise should go to Travis Frederick and Zach Martin and Tyron Smith instead. And in response to that, I just gotta say it, that's a load of crap. Ezekiel Elliott earned every one of those 1,631 yards last season, and pretending that Alfred Morris or Darren McFadden could have matched those numbers is just insanity to me. Could they have rushed for a thousand yards? Probably. Could they have at least been effective? Definitely. Would they have been first team all pro and completely transformed the identity of an entire football team almost overnight? Hell no. And that's what Ezekiel Elliott did for the Cowboys in 2016. He gave them their identity back, and it's the same identity that they had when DeMarco Murray was playing for them a few years ago. Run the ball, run it again, and just when you think the defense has finally had enough, you run it down their throats some more. That's what they did best before, and it's what they do best now. Make no mistake about it, this is a running back who is obsessed with contact. He wants it, and he needs it. When Elliott's near the boundary, he's actively looking for people to hit on his way out. He routinely pounds defenses into submission, gets up, and demands to be fed again. It's that mentality of toughness and aggression that I think has grown to define the Cowboys as a team over the last year. Every carry you watch of Elliott's on film, regardless of how many yards it gets, he's always finishing with an edge. He's always dropping his pads, pumping those legs, and he never ever goes down without a fight. It's why he got 932 yards after contact last season, which was over half of his total production. Those 900 plus yards would have put him just outside of the top 15 rushers in the NFL, and that's just after contact. That's how much production he created all on his own with no help from anyone else. Whether it was turning 1-yard gains into 3-yard gains or turning 3-yard gains into 15-yard gains, his ability to break tackles and always fight for extra yards gave Dallas a very unique advantage. Elliott's consistency in churning out that bonus yardage meant that they were almost always in manageable downs and distances. His pure power would be the difference between, say, being in a 3rd and 3 situation and being in a 3rd and 7 situation, which for a rookie 4th round pick at quarterback that's still adjusting to the NFL, that's a huge difference. It means less pressure is on Dak Prescott to perform, and he's put in a better situation to succeed under center. You look at the Steelers game in Week 10 as an example, and partway into the fourth quarter, Elliott was averaging nearly 5 yards per carry, but he only had a long of 8 yards. And what that tells you is that those 5 yards per carry was a true average. It wasn't inflated by a single 60-yard run with a bunch of bad runs in between. He really was banging out consistent four, five, and six yard carries to keep the offense on schedule and take the pressure off of Dak. And when you are consistently getting those gains and imposing your will physically, it wears out a defense. It pays dividends later in the game because linebackers and defensive backs get exhausted when they take that kind of beating over and over again, and eventually they end up making mistakes or being late to their assignments. We saw late in the fourth quarter of that same Pittsburgh game where Elliott grinded them down for four straight quarters, then ripped off two late touchdowns in the final two minutes to seal the win. The Steelers were tired and slow after colliding with him all game, but Zeke just kept coming back for more until they finally broke for good. That to me is what's really remarkable about him. He never ever slows down. Elliott dishes out just as much punishment as he takes, but when the fourth quarter rolls around, it's like he's still on his first carry. It's amazing, really. He's not the biggest or the fastest or the quickest running back in the league, but what he does have more than almost everyone else is stamina. He simply outlasts the defense, and that's when he takes over the game. I do want to clarify one thing, though, just before I get hate mail. Just because I said he isn't the fastest or the quickest runner in the league doesn't mean that he isn't fast. He does have a lot of speed, but it's more of a deceptive gliding speed. You don't really realize that he's moving as fast as he is until you look at the people chasing him and see them slowly fade away into the distance. He's got the juice to burn pursuit angles if he needs to, especially as a receiver, which makes him just as big of a threat on third down as he is on first down. He can easily take a screen all the way to the house or rip off a long gain to the edge off a crack toss, which is just one more element to his skill set that defenses have to be aware of when game planning against him. Even on runs that are not designed to go outside, he still has the ability to make something out of nothing with his pure speed when he bounces to the edge. 
you look at this run here late in the first quarter of the Eagles game, Dallas is running a play called double right wing 40 gut, or at least that's what I know it as. They probably have their own terminology. But anyway, the Eagles plugged up the design gap inside and Zeke has nowhere to go. So immediately he starts shifting his eyes and reading gap to gap from the inside out. You watch his lower body here and he does a great job of opening his hips and resetting his feet. And as soon as he sees a chance to bubble out, he bursts to the edge, separates from Leotis McKelvin with a stiff arm, and uses that speed to get 13 more yards and another first down. And of course, there's also a nice little hurdle there to get a few more yards on top of that as well. Now, all 13 of those yards that Elliott just ripped off there were his and only his. They were not blocked for him, and it's just yet another example of his ability to create his own production. If you're going to be an elite running back in this league, you have to be able to generate yards for yourself, and he does create a lot of his own production with that speed and the power and the quick feet, and of course with his vision too. He's not elite in any one area other than maybe just raw strength, but the fact that Elliott's at least good at everything means that he's exceptionally well-rounded and he can have success in any formation, any personnel grouping, and on any down and distance. If you want to run power, you can run power. If you want to run zone, you can run zone. If you want to isolate him as a receiver, he can produce through the air. And if you want to keep him in to protect and rely on him to keep your quarterback clean, he can definitely do that too. He's a lot like Frank Gore in that way back when Gore was in his prime. He was an excellent ball carrier for the 49ers for a lot of years, but when it came time to protect his quarterback, he did so with consistency and ferocity that very few running backs have ever matched. Like I said earlier, Elliott is obsessed with contact, and picking up blitzes is just yet another opportunity for him to indulge that. So to wrap this up before it gets way, way too long, here's what the Cowboys got with their fourth overall pick investment in Zeke. He's a thick, powerful runner that sets up manageable downs and distances and keeps the offense on schedule. He can bang around with linebackers between the tackles without losing any steam, but he also has the speed to make big plays on the edges. He's got nice, soft hands as a receiver, but when he's not catching passes, he can be a very reliable pass protector as well. Most importantly though, he has the stamina to wear down defenses over the course of a game and to do a lot of damage in the fourth quarter when it matters the most. He's a true closer for this offense, and when defenses are starting to get tired and sore, he's usually just warming up. In my opinion, not a lot of running backs are created like that anymore. Those are the same qualities that just made Leonard Fournette a top five pick this year, like Elliott was last year, because finding a back that can run inside or outside, be a receiver, and a good pass protector is really friggin' hard to do. This is the age of running back by committee, but I'll tell you what, you don't need a committee if your best back is versatile enough to never come off the field. When it comes to draft value, I did have Jalen Ramsey graded higher than Ezekiel Elliott, and in a redraft scenario, I still might take him over Elliott simply because I think he's that good. But on the flip side, I will say this. The Cowboys would not have won 13 games last year without Zeke. Absolutely no way. If Ramsey was on that team instead, I don't think they would have been the first seed in the NFC, and to be honest, they might not have even won their own division. As good as Ramsey is, there is no denying that Elliott's value to Dallas outweighs pretty much everything else. He is the Cowboys offense. Everything, and I mean everything, runs through his ability to move the chains and take pressure off of Dak. Without him on the roster, that whole operation would completely fall apart because his versatility and his play style allows that team to play a very specific brand of offense. So despite Ramsey being the higher graded player in a vacuum, I can understand why they took Zeke and why the Cowboys are still happy that they took Zeke because he gives them the identity that they want, and he helps out Dak Prescott's development more than any other player would have. And to be honest, at the end of the day, easing Prescott's development is priority number one for that entire franchise, no matter what. Every single move that front office makes is to further that one goal. So once and for all, let's just do away with this myth that Ezekiel Elliott is nothing without the rest of the Cowboys offense, because if anything, they are nothing without him. All right, that's all I got for this show. As usual on the screen are this week's wonderful Patreon supporters. A lot of you were asking for months for me to break down Elliot for this series, so hopefully this answered a lot of the questions you had about him and the value he brings to the Cowboys offense. And potentially, at least in my case, the value he brings to your fantasy team next season as well. I'm the lucky guy that got both Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott and Tyreek Hill all in the same dynasty draft class, so I'm feeling pretty good about my team right now. Next week, though, I'm going to take a look at Elliott's ex-teammate and fellow former Buckeye, Joey Bosa. They were both part of that incredible rookie class that Ohio State just injected into the league, along with Michael Thomas, Eli Apple, and Taylor Decker, among others. 
Bosa was just as impressive on defense in his first year as Elliott was on offense, and we're going to break down what made him such an instant sensation and whether or not he can maintain that pace in year two. So I'll have all that for you guys next Thursday. Until then, later. Later.